Hi, friends. Good morning. Super Bowl Sunday. Okay. No cheers. Hey, I want to apologize for last Sunday. I was in Kansas. I had a healing service uh, last Sunday morning, afternoon, excuse me, in Kansas. And uh, Sunday morning, I don't know what happened. I was staying at my sister, the Wi Fi, something. I don't have any explanation for it, but I missed my podcast last Sunday. So obviously, I apologize for that. And uh, thank you for tuning in today. Got a very interesting Bible study for you. Remember, you can contact me, uh, Mike at hardcorechristianity.com. You can see our live services on our YouTube channel every Thursday and Friday night at 7 o'clock Mountain Time. That's youtube.com slash House of Healing AZ. And uh, if you need deliverance or healing, every Wednesday night our podcast, excuse me, our Zoom channel is on at 6 o'clock Mountain Time. Brother Rick and the ministry team are on the Zoom channel. That thing is the bomb. And uh, I, hope you'll, I hope you'll be there this Wednesday night. Yesterday, I had the privilege of being at the Arnie Beck Memorial. I was uh, brought a short message about Jesus. And then after that, had a wonderful service at the hangar. And seven people get a major touch of the Holy Ghost. One 15-year-old boy got saved. And one man got born again for the first time. I got went through major deliverance. It was beautiful. I prayed for two ministers, the Holy Spirit touched them and were singing in tongues after God healed them. So we're grateful for that and uh, happy to say goodbye to my friend Arnie Beck. Folks, as you know, the planet's going to hell in a handbasket right in front of our eyes. We're seeing it on the news with social media and cameras everywhere all over the world. Everybody's a photographer now and a videographer. I got a cell phone. No, there's nothing revealed, nothing hidden that shall not be made known, Jesus said. That's exactly what's happening. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the great apostasy that's coming in the tribulation because the preliminary apostasy has already started. Remember, human beings are made out of five parts, as you would call, body, soul, spirit, mind, and conscience. Your conscience is different from your soul in that it is the seat of your morality. Right and wrong come out of the conscience. Your soul is the seat of your emotions. Your emotions, good or bad, come out of your soul. Your spirit man is the seat of your spirituality. You're born again in spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in your spirit man. And your gifts and your anointing and your fruit all come out of your spirit man if you are born again Christian. That's how it works. Your mind, as you know, is the seat of your free will and uh, your intelligence, right? And your body is the sack or the suitcase. It's all contained in. Your inner man fits inside your body. At death, only your body goes to the grave. I went to the memorial yesterday for my friend, Anita. His body was in the grave, but his inner man was in heaven. And I emphasized that to the folks that were there. And it was wonderful. Here's the problem. During the great apostasy and the tribulation, and what we're seeing now, the preliminary apostasy, which is what we're in now, we're seeing people developing seared consciences. A seared conscience is illustrated by Brother Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 4. It says that they had a seared conscience. And the Greek word kateriazo means to cauterize. When your conscience sears, it becomes hard and inflexible and no longer works. So that things that used to be sinful to you are no longer sinful. Things that used to bother you no longer bother you. Your conscience becomes seared through a psychiatric process called systematic desensitization. The more you're exposed to something, the more normal it becomes. So if you're raised in an immoral environment with two parents that are 
barnyard crazy, you're going to be exposed to sinful behavior, exposed to language, exposed to behaviors that are sinful, wicked, or evil, but they seem perfectly normal to you, and they're fine because you were systematically desensitized to it over the years, and it becomes perfectly normal. That is everybody. Whatever you're exposed to loses its allure and becomes normal. If, if you're raised raised with you know in a game, you know, and shooting people in the head, at first your conscience kind of ooh, that's not quite right. Fifteen killings later, oh, you're fine with it. Yeah, you know, blow somebody's brains out. When you pass this on, it's like another thing. That's exactly what the great apostasy is. Only here, Paul was talking about the church. It's the church that develops a seared conscience. And you can see it with these mega churches. They're all loaded with scandals and sin. It's unbelievable. Hill song. There's another sex scandal breaking out every five minutes. Acts 29, Marsdale, all these people, mega churches, TV preachers. They've all got seared consciences so that stuff that they're doing now is stuff they would have never done when they were younger or shortly after they were born again when they were even five. They couldn't have done it. But over the years, as they've been exposed to lying, cheating, stealing, graft, lies, falsehoods, embellishments, fakery, trickery, as they've been exposed to it over the years, now it's perfectly normal. Nobody thinks anything about it. They, they certainly don't. Well, check this out. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, I want to read something to you. It's really interesting. In 2 Timothy, excuse me, in 2 Peter chapter 1, the great apostle goes over what things you need to do to be a good disciple, a good Christian, a good follower of Christ, a good servant. And he goes through these things that you need to do and the things you need to have to be a powerful man or woman of God. 2 Peter chapter 1. Well then, Peter flips to chapter 2, wherein he shows the people what happens when these people who did those things no longer do them. Okay, chapter 1 is a list of things that Peter goes over that people need to do as to be a great servant of God, powerful man and woman of God. Chapter one, here's the list. Then he says, if those people do that and then they stop it, now we're into chapter two. Now we're in chapter two. And he goes through and illustrates what kind of people these Christians who have abandoned truth and faith have become. And he writes another list, like a grocery list, brilliant, thing, 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 thing. They're easy to read, easy to understand. Uh, if you haven't read Second Peter, you know, um, it's a powerful book to say the least. And uh, if you're not in the right frame of mind, it sounds kind of depressing because he handles tough issues. Peter was a tough guy. And he handled tough issues. He wasn't like a TV preacher where you smooth everything over and you drop people's drawers and you kiss their fannies and then you collect money from them. No, Peter didn't do that. Okay, He just spoke God's word. He spoke truth. And he didn't care if he liked it or not. Period. This is what it was. End of story. That's a true man of God, by the way. It's just an aside for the podcast this morning. That's that's what you need to strive to do. Somebody who teaches the word and doesn't compromise it and doesn't apologize for it. You know, that's what God's calling you to do. But if you check out 2 Peter chapter 2, man, he goes through and illustrates all the features of these people who used to be born again spirit filled Christians who have now become apostates. They have fallen away. And he explains what they're like. So he's showing the church, this is what you're supposed to be like, but if you become that and then you fall away, this is what you're like. 
I mean, this is what's going to happen to you. Check this out. Second Peter, uh, chapter two, verse twenty. Fascinating material. Peter says, "Quote: If after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, now that's the Greek word kosmos, it means the human world, humanity. After you get out of the pollutions of being in the human world, which we all have, all of you have, you're born again." Christians, you have the Holy Spirit. You transitioned out of that world into this world, Father's world. You were dead, you were now alive. You were in darkness, now you have light. Right? And that's why you're on this podcast. You're obviously a spirit filled born again Christian. That's why you're listening to me right now. But these people went back and abandoned their true faith. And Peter's Warning you, he says, if after, after they have escaped the pollutions of humanity, it says, through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Now, that Greek word for knowledge is very important. Okay, it's a Greek word, pygnosis, it means full knowledge, total knowledge. Okay, so what he's talking about here is veteran, journeyman. Christians, not babes in Christ, not children who just got saved. He's talking about veteran Christians. Okay? You have to make that distinction to read any further. Because if you don't, you're going to read in deception. These are veteran Christians, as my granddad used to say, you should have known better. That's what this is. This is saints who know better. And in fact, they know very much better. And Peter describes it. Check this out. He says, if after they have escaped the pollutions of humanity through the full knowledge of the Lord Jesus... And they again become entangled. The Greek word impleco is a word you would use to describe a spider's nest. It means to get entangled. If you get in a spider's nest and you're a bug, right? The more you fight, the tighter the net connects to you. If you lay there and do nothing, the net doesn't entangle you. But when somebody flies into a spider's web, they want it, they try to get out. And the more they move, the, the more entangled they get. And so what Peter's saying here, these veteran Christians are like bugs that fly into spider's webs and they become entangled. And he says, and they are overcome. They get entangled and at that point, they're not overcome. But if they stay entangled, they are later overcome. And once they become overcome, they're finished. They become Vincent Price zombies. They become an extra in Night of the Living Dead. They are gone while they're still alive. He said the latter end of them is worse than the first. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. And then after they found out about it, to turn from the Holy Commandments to the Lord. And then he quotes Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 22, the end of the chapter. It says it happened to them according to the true proverb. It's talking about Proverbs chapter, chapter 26. The dog has turned again to his vomit. The sow went back to wallowing in the mire. Borborus is the Greek word for mud. Wallowing in the mire. Okay? There is a point in your life 
where grace and mercy can no longer get to me. There's a point in your life where grace and mercy no longer work. And you become like Pharaoh of Egypt, like Esau, like Balaam, like Judas. They were alive, but they were lost permanently. They could not come back. Why is that? If you damage your conscience to the point where it's seared, Paul was, Paul was, Paul was talking about it first. First Timothy chapter 4. When it's seared, it no longer works. And you reach a point in here when you can't come home. I told you this before, but I have a list of people in my office. The whole page. Almost the whole page, not quite. Uh, single space, single line. Of people that are dead. They came to the delivery center. They came to the house of healing years ago. They're dead. Physically dead. They wouldn't listen. They heard truth over and over and over again, and then their conscience sealed, and then the devil simply murdered them. You're done. You're done. You can't come home. I'm not going to believe that. Everything's possible in God. Yeah, I do too. I, I believe that too. Except when a person's conscience is seared and they're no longer here, the Holy Spirit convicting them of what they're doing is wrong. They are loved. Come home. They don't feel it anymore. Cateriazzo. Their conscience is seared. It's hardened, it's turned to stone. It doesn't work anymore. Listen, uh, if I miraculously had a bed that suddenly appeared here and a, and a third grader laying in bed stark naked, waving at me to come, I would go, what in the world? Are you nuts? Get that kid in that bed out of here. Why is that? Technically, my conscience would not allow me to engage in pedophilia behavior. A gun miraculously appears. A million dollars in cash is sitting on the air guys now. All I gotta do is shoot the guy in the head and get the money. I'm going to go home broke. Why not? My conscience would not allow me to shoot someone in the head for money. My conscience doesn't allow that. I can't do that. But if my conscience was seared and I felt nothing and I don't care, you could do anything. Anything. Look at our society today. Look at other people. Look at Black Lives Matter. Look at white supremacists. Look at these stinking politicians in Washington, all the Republicans that have done. These people have seared consciences. They don't care who they care. They don't care who they care. It doesn't affect them. There's a guy named George Soros who got elected to office in the house. Everybody hates this guy's guy. guts. Because he's the pathological out, he's going to rail. Okay? What's the problem with that? Big problem is George Soros. Is that his name? Santos? They're all the same. Whatever this clown's name is, 
He's better than the politicians that are already there. Why? He hasn't been there long enough to destroy anything. He hasn't been there long enough to lie and cheat and steal. He's an amateur. He's a rookie. Oh, I'm outraged. This guy lies all the time. What? Have you looked in a mirror? These politicians lie all the time. They're just like him. Santos is his name. They're just like him. They just didn't get caught. Why? Santos lies all the time. He's mentally ill. He's a pathological liar. His conscience is seared. So if he tells a lie, it's like me asking you, uh, do, you like, do you like this uh, cheap shirt or do you like the Philly shirt? You know, which do you like? I mean, that's how he sees it. It's just like another thing. Pass the song. Have you got a minute? That's it. He doesn't feel it. The guy's conscience is seared. Christians nowadays, these fake ministers, all these kooks on TV, they have seared consciences and they don't care. They don't feel anything. And once you reach the point where you can no longer feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit, Peter outlines it in 2 Peter chapter 2, it would have been better for you never to have been saved in the first place. Because the more someone knows, um, the more they're responsible for it. That's what Jesus said. The more you know, the more you're responsible for it. When you start your journey in Christianity, in ministry, on the road to discipleship, once you start that journey of deliverance, when you start casting out the different layers of spirits, hiding in your brain or your body, once you start doing that, you can't stop. You cannot go back. Because Peter said, the latter end of you will be worse than the first. Okay? It's worse than the first. And so God is telling you, hey, man, once you start, you cannot stop. Once you start, you cannot stop. Have you started? You got to go all the way. You cannot stop. You cannot stop. You cannot stop. And you're not going to stop. You know why? You've been called by God. In Revelation chapter 2 and 3, Jesus plainly stated it. Only the overcomers get the benefits of the rewards in glory. Okay? Hypothetically. I've done this myself. And it's a privilege. You go to the hospital and somebody gets saved on their deathbed. I've done that a few times. It's fantastic. They get saved on their deathbed. They go to heaven. They have no rewards. They were a Christian for 30 minutes and then they died. Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus explains that the rewards in heaven are not given out to every Christian. They're only given out to the Christians who are overcomers. What does an overcomer mean? It means someone who overcame something. You can't be victorious not having overcome something to make you a victor. You can't be a winner if you didn't overcome somebody and win. You are not going to go back to your body. Okay? You, look, you want a prophetic word this morning? Okay. You're not going back to your body. You are not going back to the big pen and all around you. It's not going to happen to you. You are going to press forward till you win. And you will not be detoured. No way. You're going to go all the way. And when the 